Have you ever wanted to support your teammates through ways that don't always require you to get a kill, as you suck in general? You may think that I'm a madman for saying that, but you can win matches fairly well if you stay on point and help your team via reviving them. Trials has taught me a number of things when it comes down to winning matches, and one of them is that getting a team rival in most environments can swing who will win these individual fights. Although many people will try to solo it and get lucky, or some will give up, most will go ahead and revive a team member if they know they can pull it off, and in today's build, I'm going to provide you a precious scars build that will help you out in many ways, plus give you an advantage when pulled off correctly. This is a type of build that if you're playing solo or in team, and you suck at getting kills as much as a fallen dreg tries to land their shots, you'll be able to assist your team through empowering them and preventing them from being killed again. Not your average PvP build, but who cares when you're having fun, right? Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using Code Degressor so we can utilize our suppressing abilities while out in the field. Suppressor grenades will be highly used within the build to shut down roaming supers and the player's abilities in general, and this alone can wipe a lot of matches when Shadow Dive Hunters aren't able to Shadow Dive at all. From use, I've noticed that the grenades won't outright kill most players, which is fine, as it's not always guaranteed, but it will suppress them heavily, which will cause them to run and back off if they can't challenge you. With your team, you can use this to cause a little chaos and pick off those running and catch the other players off guard while they still try to recover and rinse and repeat. We do also have the shield bash ability that upon activation will allow us to suppress and disorient players who won't have much of a fighting chance either. Adding to our grenade's usage, we have the superior arsenal perk that will grant us extra grenade energy upon defeating the player via grenades alone, and when combined with the grenade kickstart mod, we can intentionally get a full round of grenade energy back with ease. Very strong in trials if your aim is true, and you can net those easy grenade kills. Now as supers and grenades are going to be the main go-to areas that a lot of players will be investing in, it also makes sense to do the same via the In The Trenches perk which will reduce our super cooldown when surrounded and also net a kill. Combine that with the second shield perk and how strong the perk is when it lands a hit, and you can become Captain America within your 3rd to 4th round. Although Top Tree Sentinel would be more suited considering that Precious Scars will be providing health and overshields over time, which Top Tree also offers, Code of the Protector requires close range melee playstyle if you wish to succeed, and in trials this is something that most players will avoid unless they know how to play around said playstyle. I do recommend you give it a try, and ideally with a team of comms, but don't expect a huge amount of success with it if you're not familiar with the map, players you're facing, and the subclass itself. For weapons, you're going to need to pick something that suits the map you're playing on, but also needing them to be voice so you can trigger the Precious Scar's exotic perk. For this, there isn't a goal in mind in terms of which one you must pick. This time round, any type of void weapon you pick should be down to what makes you feel comfortable. Take my secondary, BMD Shura's Wrath SMG with Killing Wind and Celerity. A great void based SMG with great range, stats, and a perfect perk designed around surviving solo moments. I have found that the target acquisition is very sticky and almost laser like to the point that I can easily take on groups of players on my own without needing to fret. Adding in celerity to the mix also boosts my weapon stats even more, and we can outright get crazy with the build, which works like a charm when using it with pressure scars. Alternatively, No Composure is another weapon that is great to use for its range and fast firing rounds it can use. It only takes one full blast from a player to evaporate someone, and then only a few seconds after to finish a second person off. With this, if you know how to play aggressive and you're happy to close a the gap, then this is really great void fusion pair with pressure scars and the subclass in general. Your primary now will need to accommodate the void weapon being used, and I would recommend you use another close range weapon to achieve this, such as the peace balance sidearm with substance and source buckler. This free burst sidearm has a very smooth fire rate and accuracy, which will easily allow you to take out players via headshots. I have found a lot of success with the sidearm compared to anything else I've used, and the perks I have with it fits the weapon design very really well. Substitutes will auto reload a weapon the moment we get a kill, which is great in the really chaotic scenarios, while Source Buckler is pretty much a damage boost if we net a kill via melee or the weapon itself. It's a lot more reliable to go with a sidearm with a setup, as at least you have some range placed between a fusion to shock and user. Also, you have more rounds to waste while others may only have 1-2 rounds available to start. 
overall a great little weapon to main in PvP, especially for this build specifically. For heavy, I won't cover this area as we won't be using heavy at all within the build. As you may know, it's quite risky to use heavy in trials and heavy won't always change the flow of matches so often. So I will leave this vacant for you guys to decide what you like. For stats, we should be focusing our efforts into the discipline and intellect area as previously mentioned. 60 to 80 will be the sweet spot and no specific mods for PvP are going to be needed to make this build highly adjustable. But simply, using the ability recovery rate mods are equally just as important as everything else. Key mods such as impact induction will reduce our grenade's cooldown rate. Absolution will reduce all of our ability cooldowns upon collecting the orb of power. And distribution which also reduces our ability cooldown is what you should be aiming for. Depending on which weapon you'll be using, you will also need to be using the key unflinching and targeting mods to further help you win 1v1 engagements. I would also recommend you get your resilience up as high as possible, as you can use your barricades to block off entrances and revive team members while under fire. The 60 is a good spot to go as the natural recovery rate for the stat is quite high to begin with. With all of our ability mods and a new kickstart a utility mod attached, you should be able to get a good chunk of that back within a few short time frame between each match. Remember, as this is focusing on child and competitive play, there is no point in adding in child-like mods that grant you increased damage because of their limited usage and activation phases. Radiant Light and Powerful Fence can be used as they provide the user an alternative stat that changes the rest of your natural stat points. Except from that, I wouldn't expect you to use anything outside of that. Now, as we recover the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have intellect, sidearm targeting, and submachine gun targeting mod. Arm, we have minor intellect, fastball, and impact induction mod. Chest, we have intellect, add unstoppable submachine gun mod, times two. Leg, we have intellect, absolution, and submachine gun holster mod. Mark, we have discipline, distribution, and utility kickstart mod. But thanks to my two friends, Pete and Ashton, I was able to get enough clips of the build in action via their deaths alone. They knew exactly what was happening and I did warn them I wouldn't be throwing for no reasons, although I don't know if they still believe me or not. But thanks to the games we played, I managed to fully see how the build broke down in most engagements, and I can fully say that it has its place whether you're solo or in a competent team. Although I find it to be more useful on solo player trials, simply because you can activate it more often when you're playing with unknown players, but let's take a look at it from a more experienced group of players point of view. The Pressure Scars has two exotic perks. Its first option allows users to activate a quick burst of healing upon getting a kill with the following elemental weapon being used. This feature only works if paired with a subclass of the same type, so as I'm using both the Void Weapons and Void Subclass together, I will be able to activate this quick burst of healing for me and my team and also help them get back from the brink of death. If I have a different elemental weapon instead than the one then shown, then it won't work at all, which is why it's important you look at what subclass offers, what, before attaching a matching weapon to it, so you can get the best benefits from there onwards. Its second effect will provide you and your team members a overshield upon being revived, or reviving others, and this overshield is very useful in terms of surviving close range weapons that would otherwise one shot you. It's basically a free get out of the way overshield that can be used multiple times as long as someone is down, or you go down. The exotic from experience seems to have a much more profound effect in PvP compared to PvE, as you have ample amount of times to activate it in a short time frame. Plus, the moment you activate it, it doesn't get you absolutely shredded by a higher tier enemy combatant. On top of that, a brief but useful buff of healing per kill while near your team members can go a long way of getting them back into the game, rather than running and hiding until they recover. In a way, it can allow your team to play aggressive as long as you're the one getting the kills activated. They still need to go ahead and pull their way around, but at least they know that if they die and I revive them, at least they're guaranteed a protection for a few seconds. However, don't expect this build or exotic to make the game easier for you. Unlike PvE, you're facing players who literally haven't touched grass since the day they were born, and once they get one person down on your team, they may, or most likely will, rush the other two that's left, preventing the chance of recovering anyone that's been left. This is why if you use the build you've got to use it in a way of sticking close to your own team members, but also be able to stand your ground if need be. 
and having your barricades ready and available goes a long way or prevent others from pushing up. And if you have someone with a stag plus with combo, even better. Now let me just say that the build is customizable if you don't want to run void or the weapons I'm using. Both solo or arc subclasses offer great perks and weapons to mix and match with, and a simple top tree solo with Ignis Hammer or Stars and Shadow, etc. can go a long way if you know how to use any form of weaponry you're comfortable with. The choice is ultimately down to you, but at the end of the day, as long as you're having fun and you're doing the best you can, that's all that matters. Just have fun and take breaks. You can't be a team supporter if you're fully exhausted to your max. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.